I'm going to relay the story of celebrity sighting. Despite her identity obscuring hat and overcoat, I recognized the singer of No Doubt immediately. Checking in on British Airways Flight 112, London bound, one person ahead of me in the line at JFK Airport. Her name is Gwen Stefani. I realize that I know this without knowing exactly why I know this. And I don't like that. That's an oppressive sensation. The idea that someone is taking up space in your mind without giving you any space in theirs. You should be paying rent in my mind, I want to say, Fugazi style, when I see her. And it gets worse as I look to her side and see her equally camo companion, her husband, Gavin Rossdale, Bush. That guy really owes me some <laughs> He is, he doesn't take up much space, but in the words of my own current landlord, he is not a desirable tenant. <laughs> Still, my ire fades quickly, replaced by a feeling of, of actual joy. Although the presence of these people on the plane does not lessen the statistical probability of a hijacking, it makes the possibility of a hijacking seem a lot more exciting. And given the passenger options, how likely is it that I'm going to end up the hostage? There's a strange satisfaction to that thought that these people who have handlers and managers have been placed aboard the same flight as me. Someone did some research. Someone ascertained that this was a safe flight. It's funny that I can't recall the specifics of how I got on this plane, how I booked it. It was like an 800 number. Remember it. And that's actually a piece of useful information that I could use again later. And the name Gwen Stefani, on the other hand, is useless, except that I can say that I saw Gwen Stefani. But there they are, Stefani and Rossdale, taking up space in my mind, crowding out other important information, the Pythagorean theorem, my civil rights. That's the depressing reality of the modern mind. It's like Geraldo Rivera opening up Al Capone's vault. There's a lot of hype, a lot of empty promises, but inside, really, you find very little substance. I listen to stories on NPR, Five minutes later, I can't remember whether it was Sierra Leone or Sri Lanka that they were talking about. I, I don't know, but, but Tel Aviv, that's on the first Duran Duran and Rio is on the second. And I will carry that information to the grave. <laughs> we check in our luggage, we get our tickets assigned. And then we go over to the x-ray machine. I see the security guard look at those camouflage-wearing people ahead of me, and she gives that sort of reflexive, startled look. I mouth to her. She smiles, nods at me with wide-eyed enthusiasm. Gwen and Gavin open their briefcases, take out their iMac power books, put them on the x-ray machine. And then a guard announces, all right, could everyone take off your hats and coats and place them on the conveyor belts? It's part of the new routine, heightened anti-terrorism security measures. And I look at them, and I see them overcome with a moment of frozen panic. And then they shrug. The jig is up. 
they take off their coats, and underneath, they are wearing what might as well be superhero outfits. As if they have to be board the plane directly on stage at an arena. <laughs> they whip off the jackets, and it's like floodlights go on in the security area. All of a sudden, everyone realizes, celebrities. It's like American royalty, waving their hands, smiling. And there's a palpable feeling of euphoria. The passengers know that we are safe within those companies. Nothing is going to happen to us. Civilization is intact. It's going to be.